Hello. In the next few videos, we're going to be doing the analysis of a cascode amplifier. Um, I have drawn a cascode amplifier, and the first thing we're going to do is the DC and midband analysis. So with the DC analysis, we're going to calculate the Q point, the operating point. Um, and in a cascode amplifier, I have two transistors, Q1 and Q2. Uh, Q1 forms a common emitter, and then it fits into Q2, which is a common base amplifier. Um, and so I, I need to be a little bit more careful when I label my voltages. It's no longer, I can't talk no longer about uh, VB and VE, but rather I need to indicate what I'm talking about, uh, VB of transistor Q1 uh, or of transistor Q2, etc. So I'm going to label things as uh, VB1 for the base voltage of transistor 1, VB2 for the base voltage of transistor 2, and so forth. So let's start my uh, DC analysis. I'm going to calculate my VB1, the base voltage for transistor 1, which is going to be equal to uh, 5K divided by uh, R1 plus R2, which is 54K plus 5K times my VCC, which is 20 volts. And notice that I have ignored um, the base current uh, going into Q1, or the current going to the base of Q1, uh, simply because my overall emitter resistance connected to Q1 is 500 ohms, which multiplied times beta is 50 kilo ohms, since beta is 100, and R3 is much smaller, uh, it's 5 kilo ohms, so one order of magnitude smaller than uh, the, the resistance looking into the base of Q1, uh, what I will call RIB. And therefore, um, I'm just approximating it at the parallel combination of R3 with RIB1, I'm approximating it as R3. So let's proceed. If I do my, that calculation, I get 1.7 volts for VB1. Um, I can then calculate VB2, and again, I'm going to use a voltage divider approximation, where I now have R2 uh, in series with R3, or 8K, divided by R1, 51K, plus 8K, times 20 volts. And again, I have ignored uh, the base current going into Q2, the current going into the base of Q2, and so I've approximated R1 uh, as forming a voltage divider with the series combination of R2 and R3. Um, the reason why that's a, a fairly good approximation is because uh, my input resistance looking into the base of Q2, that I can label that IB2, is going to be beta times a literary in series width, and now I'm going to have the output resistance of Q1 um, little r o, and that's going to be a very large number. So um, we can assume that input resistance to be much larger than R2 in series with R3, and therefore we're going to neglect it. And so that gives me 2.7 volts for my VV2. With this, I can calculate VE1 is just going to be uh, VB1 minus 0.7, minus 1 voltage drop, so 1 volt, and VE2 is going to be VB2 minus 0.7, or 2 volts. Now, since Q1 and Q2 are connected uh, in series with each other, uh, the emitter of Q2 is connected to the collector of Q1, uh, the same current or approximately the same current is going to flow through the, uh, the two transistors. And so we're going to approximate IC1 as being equal to IC2. So I can calculate my value of IC1 and IC2 as VE1 divided by the overall emitter resistance RE1 plus RE2. And that's going to be 1 divided by 500, or 2 milliamps. 
And with this, I can calculate my, uh, my collector voltage, VC2. So it's going to be VCC minus uh, the voltage drop across resistor RC. So 20 minus 2 milli times 5.5K or 9 volts. So that's for the DC analysis. Now for my mid band analysis, I'm going to calculate my volt small signal voltage gain, input resistance, output resistance. For the DC analysis, I have assumed all the capacitors to be open circuits because they behave as open circuits to DC. Uh, for my small signal or mid band analysis, I'm going to assume all of these capacitors in the circuit are um, acting as short circuits. And so the magnitude of my voltage gain for a common base amplifier in the mid-band region. And I'm going to calculate first the nominal value and then the effective value. Nominal value is without loading or without considering the loading effects. The effective value or the actual value is considering the loading effects. And so since it's a magnitude, I'm just going to express it as, well, I'll express it as the magnitude of the negative quantity to avoid confusion. And so overall resistance connected to the collector of Q2, which is going to be um, RC. Um, technically speaking, in parallel with little arrow, so let's go ahead and write that. Divided by the overall resistance connected to the emitter of Q1. And so that's going to be little R1 plus R1. R2 is bypassed by the bypass capacitor. And so this is equal to, um, and let me calculate my little array and little row values out here. So little array, and notice that since um, we have approximated the I collector current of the two transistors to be equal to each other, then little array is going to be equal um, for both transistors. So little array one will be equal to little array two, thermal voltage over quiescent current. 25 milli divided by 2 milli or 12.5 ohms. And then little ro, uh, same thing, same for both transistors. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go ahead and just refer, to, well, I'll still use the subscripts, I think, just confusion. So 100 volts divided by 2 milliamps, which will be 50 kilo ohms. All right. So this will be little R02 in my um, numerator. So I can now go ahead and enter values. My RC is 5.5K in parallel with 50K divided by little R1, 12.5. Uh, plus RE1, 97.5. And so I can approximate this as being, I'm um, gonna approximate my parallel combination of um, RC and little RO2 as being approximately equal to RC. So I'm just gonna write 5.5, okay, in the numerator and then 110 uh, in my denominator. But if you want it to be more precise and you wanted to actually do the calculation at the top, it will be uh, 4.7K divided by 110. Um, it's approximately equal to 50, uh, which is 34 dBs. All right, and that will be uh, without taking into consideration loading factors, so we have ignored RL. If we wanted to calculate the effective gain, then you will have to consider um, RL in the numerator. So this will be RC in parallel with little R02 in parallel with RL, because all of those will be resistances connected to the collector of Q2 divided by little r1 plus capital r1.
And if you want it to be even more proper, uh, you will also consider the loading factor from the input um, of the circuit. Uh, you can see that you know, when you run a simulation, you're going to consider the gain with respect to Vs, um, which is the voltage level right here, not with respect to Vin, which is the voltage level um, at the base of Q1. Right now, this expression for the gain will give us the ratio of the output to Vin, which is um, at the point that I am marking at the base of Q1. Notice that there is a loading factor between Rs and the input resistance to our um, amplifier. Um, and so if you wanted to be very precise in your gain, you will actually write it considering that, that loading factor. So you will write this time, and then this will be R in divided by R in plus Rs, okay? Um, in this case, I believe R in is going to be uh, much larger than Rs, and so we're going to go ahead and ignore that loading factor just for uh, simplicity of calculations. Since we are doing an approximation, you know, we shall expect when we simulate our circuit, our gain is going to be slightly off. Um, so let's go ahead. This will be RC, which is 5.5K. Uh, Oops. In parallel with 50K, in parallel with 100K, divided by 12.5 plus 97.5. And since the 100K is uh, much larger, I'm going to approximate this as being 4.7K divided by 110, which is 42.7, uh, which is 32.5 dBs. And I think I entered the wrong value before because um, it for the resistor, this was actually approximated as being 5.5K, or 5K, I believe. Um, all right, so I have my uh, my values for the midband voltage gain, um, the nominal value and the effective value, again, ignoring uh, the input loading factor. So a little approximation there. Let's go ahead and calculate my input resistance now. Input resistance will be, as I've labeled already in the circuit, I'm going to um, change the color just to keep it consistent with other problems we've solved. So this will be the input resistance. Resistance looking into that uh, base node of Q1. And so we can see it's going to be um, R3 in parallel with R2. R2 is directly connected to ground via um, capacitor CB, which is acting as a short circuit in the midband region. So this will be R2 in parallel with R3. And that's all in parallel with the resistance looking into the base of Q1. And that's going to be by the um, reflection rule beta times the resistance connected to the emitter of Q1, which is little re1 plus re1, and re2 is being bypassed by CBE. So let's go ahead and do our calculation. This is R2, so 3K in parallel with 5K in parallel with 100 times. Um, and little re1 plus capital R1 is 110. So there you have it. This is approximately 1.6 kilo ohms. And finally, our output resistance, which is going to be the resistance looking. into the collector of Q2, mm -hmm. and that's going to be RC in parallel with little R02. So 5.5K in parallel with 50K, um, this is approximately 5 kilo ohms. All right. Now we can go ahead and highlight the important results. 
and our collector currents. Here they are. Um, and next, we're going to calculate uh, the frequency response. Thank you.